don't worry, part 3 of 10,000 BCE is coming soon, I promise. But, before I finally finish that off, I wanted to talk about something rather weird and I find rather fascinating. Scientists, philosophers, historians, scholars, and intellectuals throughout human history have questioned the past. For many early cultures, the past was something mysterious and murky. The ancient Greeks and Romans broke history into three divisions, historical, mythical, and the obscure. The historical period was that of recent history, the periods in which humanity recorded and wrote down what we experienced, from about 776 BCE to the current period. The mythical period was one that was less clear, as most of what was known about it was purely from mythology and legend, from about 777 BCE to about 2300 BCE. The last period, the obscure, was simply that. It was unknown. What occurred in this time? In fact, many scholars and historians that speculated it didn't even know when it started, only when it ended. Unlike some other cultures, the Greeks and Romans, I think rightly, remained agnostic on the question of the age of the earth itself. Roman historian Censorinus noted in his De De Natale that if the origin of the world had been known to man, I would have begun there. For thousands of years, the obscure origins of humanity and the earth itself was either denied in favor of dogma, no different than baseless speculation, or unanswered. We remained ignorant of our own beginnings, living and dying without truly knowing where we came from. It wasn't until the study of fossils, geology, biology, anthropology, and a bunch of other ologies that we got a decent understanding of our distant past. Like a forensics expert trying to understand a crime after it had been committed, we tried to use similar methods to figure out history. Paleontology was one of the most important emerging fields in the study of Earth's history, and allowed us to know what occurred before men could write or speak. Today we'd like to believe we have a pretty good idea of our history. We have discovered thousands, if not millions of fossils, plant, animal, fungal, bacterial, and almost every organism in between. We found dragons, proto-whales with limbs, and ants with metallic horns, and much, much more, things our ancestors wouldn't even dream of, yet once existed long ago. We've also been able to discover our own lowly origins from minuscule Cretaceous fuzzballs and slimy amphibians. We found that life on Earth's story is one of continual birth and death. When one species dies out, a new one springs from its ashes and takes its place. It's truly fascinating. However, although we know a great deal from studying fossils and paleontology, we will never know it completely nor anywhere close to its full extent. This is because paleontology is nonetheless flawed. Just like anything, it has its limitations. At the end of the day, we must acknowledge that in the best case scenario, where all the fossils ever capable of being discovered and identified by humans are discovered and identified, sadly, they will only represent a miserable fraction of everything that has ever really existed. This is best illustrated from the fact that if we add up all the known species from the fossil record, they would only account for less than 5% of all known living species, meaning it can be estimated that the number of species known through the fossil record is a pitiful 1%, if not much less, of all species that has ever existed. What we see depicted in the fossils is merely a single frame of a massive movie. Earth's numerous ages likely were just as full of complex and diverse life forms as our own. More than 99% of all organisms will forever be unknown to us because of this. As I've mentioned in other videos, this is due to the fact fossilization requires very particular and special conditions to occur. These include avoiding predators and scavengers from consuming the remains, an environment where silt or some other sediment can cover the body quickly, and let's not forget an environment with little to no oxygen. All these factors are incredibly rare in the natural world, and even less likely to occur simultaneously. The fate of almost all life is to merely die on the surface, decaying into nothingness, and leaving zero trace they ever even existed. And even if something does get lucky enough to be fossilized, it's also subjected to the elements that can easily destroy it over time, such as erosion through rain, groundwater, wind, rivers, or waves, and the violent movement of the tectonic plates, which can grind it into dust or subduct it into the Earth's boiling mantle. A multitude of things can happen in the meantime before a fossil can be discovered by an intelligent race. This process filters down the already minute collections of fossils we have even further. Luck, good or bad, is basically all it takes. Romer's Gap is a rather interesting break in the tetrapodal fossil record from 360 to 345 million years ago, where there is a strange lack of almost any fossil remains lasting for 15 million years, an entire age missing from our records. The fossils that form may also simply be inaccessible, like those fossils that might lie beneath the ice-covered parts of the frozen continent Antarctica, which the entire United States and doubtlessly dozens of fossil formations could fit inside, but remain tantalizingly unobtainable. Additionally, even if all goes well and we dig up and save these specimens, humans can unknowingly or knowingly destroy or damage fossils. Some medieval religious sects, as well as some in more recent times, believe fossils were sent here to test our faith, and thus have for centuries hunted and destroyed them. 
Ancient Chinese would grind up and consume fossils for medicinal purposes, such as a cure for dizziness and leg cramps, a practice that still continues in some isolated parts of China to this day. And although humans have been digging up fossils for thousands of years, it is incredibly recently that we start to preserve and truly understand them. Unfortunately, we will never be able to accurately know what those dragon bones in Sichuan, China, 300 BCE were, and only mentioned as a footnote in ancient histories. One can only wonder how many stories like this have been repeated throughout humanity's immaturity. During World War II, the Allied bombing of the city of Munich, Germany, obliterated a museum housing some of the sole fossil specimens of some species, from the bizarre pancake-mouthed crocodilian, Stomata sucus, to one of the only specimens of Spinosaurus, an entire collection wiped out in an instant. There is also simply a massive amount of fossil record gaps where organisms simply were too soft or easily damaged to turn into fossils. Soft-body organisms like cephalopods and jellyfish for this reason are largely absent in the fossil record, requiring more precise conditions to preserve. Sometimes we only get a few fossils of a few animals from a region on Earth at a certain time. Can you imagine if all we knew of life on Earth in the past few million years simply came from just a couple of fossil formations in specific regions around the world? Think of all that would be missing in those gaps. As one can see, the odds are ever working against us to know our heritage and history, and it appears no matter how hard we try, we will never know about every organism that has ever existed. A mere glimpse out of a very, very tiny and narrow window beyond the wall of time. A window that is narrowing. We should consider ourselves lucky that we have gotten the amount we have, considering how much the odds are stacked against us from finding them. So much of the past seemingly has been vanished forever. Everything of what we know about Earth's history in the past is only approximation of what really happened. And this begs the question, what could be missing? What is unrecorded, forgotten, lost? What lies unknown in that 99.9%? .9%? Evolution has been able to illustrate a wide range of dazzling possibilities, and for all we know, we are only seeing the tip of an iceberg in our fossil beds and geologic columns. One can imagine and speculate outlandish animals and plants and predators and prey, and maybe intelligences. Us, humans with our cities, weapons, and histories have sometimes flirted with the idea of an existence of ones that might have come before us. The ancient Egyptians recorded a mythical period in their histories that long predated their own dynasties. They believed that 30,000 years before their founding of their own empire was the reign of the gods when the world was ruled by non-human deities. In some Hindu folklore and mythology, a race of intelligent ape-like creatures are said to have predate humanity's civilizations and built structures of their own. One of my favorite science fiction authors, H.P. Lovecraft, often contemplated the possibility of non-human intelligences in Earth's prehistory. In his story, A Shadow Out of Time, a fictional race of creatures named the Great Race of Yith lived during the late Cretaceous period and created a vast civilization millions of years before humans would ever even evolve. However, by the time of man, all traces of their cities and their own existence have disappeared, flown to dust, with humans none the wiser. In C.M. Kozman's fictitious alien world of Synad, it appears life might have evolved intelligence and faded away into extinction twice, leaving extremely minimal traces. I'm going to put on my tinfoil hat for a moment. Could there be civilizations or cultures of organisms long before our own without us even knowing it? I'm not talking about ancient astronaut theories about aliens. I'm talking about other intelligences that might have evolved and somewhat advanced millions of years before our own and that for some reason or another disappeared. The question is a difficult one. There is in fact no evidence to support the existence of civilizations, nor especially intelligent organisms that we know of, pre-existing our own. But that doesn't mean there isn't a possibility. Intelligent animals are somewhat common today. Primitive tool usage, which might with enough time and favorable environmental conditions one day lead to true intelligence, has appeared in the animal kingdom a few times, some of which entirely independently from one another. And let's remember that all these evolved relatively recently and pales in comparison in the amount of time that the dinosaurs had to change and develop throughout the Mesozoic, or the Synapsids, or other animal groups had during the Permian, Carboniferous, Devonian, Pleistocene, and Triassic. Our civilizations would appear a meager footnote next to the amount of time that has occurred throughout these periods for intelligence to take root. It's obvious that a prehistoric civilization on par with our own would be pretty easily detectable in the fossil record. Sadly, the Apollo moon landing did not find the remains of some Saurian space shuttle on the surface of the moon, and we have never found plastics, computers, or gas emissions in the fossil record. However, once something like the Romans, or the Sumerians, or the Maya, or other primitive and early human cultures might have been able to disappear with little to no trace after a few million in years. Paper rots, metal rusts, temples collapse, memories are forgotten, and just like the bones of the creator, societies can fade into obscurity. For all we know, a medieval civilization with stone cities built by dinosaur and claws, or hunted prey with wooden spears, or ones that were self-bodied, might have existed somewhere, sometime briefly in our shadowy past. 
Although unlikely and at the present baseless speculation, there is still a slim possibility that such a thing might have been possible. I know at this point I'm just rambling like a madman, but I think it's certainly a very interesting concept to contemplate. What if we were to discover such a thing about our past? What implications would that have on how we view ourselves? Could we someday end up like them, completely forgotten by time? Are we even special in the grand scheme of things? Who knows? Maybe humanity is special, and we are the only time civilization took root on this planet. We just don't know for certain and conceivably will never know such things with absolute certainty. Perhaps the past will forever remain somewhat obscure, and our comprehension of it will forever remain limited. Perhaps that is the very nature of being in the past. Well. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this rather untraditional and a bit strange video. I've been really fascinated in these somewhat philosophical concepts and speculations. I totally understand if you didn't like this rather experimental video idea. I just wanted to try something a bit new before I, you know, went back to work on the more traditional stuff. This video was inspired by a bunch of things, namely the writings of H.P. Lovecraft and the illustrations and short stories of my friend uh, C.M. Kozman. Kozman is an all-time favorite artist of mine, and he's an amazingly talented and imaginative person. You can check out his work, including his sketchbooks online, as he has a particular knack for making very interesting speculations. As you might remember from a few months ago, a documentary is being made about him, and I gotta once again promote it. So, if you want to check it out, go visit here or here or here. Well, anyways, thanks for watching, and please tell me what you thought of this video. I'd be happy to take some criticism on it. Well, anyways, Paleo Profiles in 2000 BC, Part 3, coming in the foreseeable future. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.